Hello and welcome to Everything Electrical Engineering. In today's video we will calculate the instantaneous power flow in a circuit and verify using MATLAB. Voltage, current and power are calculated before using trigonometric identities to separate into flow of energy borrowed and returned by the circuit. In this example, a suicidal voltage of 100 cos omega t is defined an inductive load of 1.25 at an angle of 60 degrees. Let the instantaneous voltage be equal to Vmax times cos omega t plus theta v, and let the instantaneous current be equal to Imax cos omega t plus theta i. And the instantaneous power is simply the product of the two. Sometimes it may be necessary or required in an inductive or capacitive circuit to look at the energy flow into the circuit, look at the power in terms of the energy flow into the circuit and in terms of energy borrowed and returned by the circuit. Now I'll discuss this further on in the video. Following examples, the instantaneous values for five discrete points will be determined and MATLAB will be used to verify the results. All worked examples will be calculated at 100 degrees. First thing to calculate here is I max, which is simply the voltage over the impedance, which is 100, an angle is 0 over 1.25 at an angle of 60 degrees, which is equal to 80, angle of 60 amps. Now let's calculate the instantaneous voltage at 100 degrees, which is I max times cos omega t plus theta v. Now it doesn't matter if we use radians or degrees here once it's reflected in the calculator which is minus 17.36 volts. Now let's Calculate the instantaneous current at 100 degrees. So this is Imax, which we worked out earlier to be 80, times cos omega t plus theta i, which is minus 60 degrees, which is equal to 61.2 amps. Now let's look at the values I previously worked out for the other four discrete points for voltage and current. These are plotted and compared against the MATLAB results. In table one we have calculated the values for both current and voltage for the five discrete points. In figure one, the blue and orange line denote the voltage and current respectfully. As we can see from the results calculated, the values represented by the red dots are verified by MATLAB as being correct. Now that we calculated the voltage and current, we can calculate the power, as this is simply the product of the two. Table 2 outlines the previously worked out discrete points for the five different, or the um, previously worked out power for five discrete points. Figure 2 looks at the MATLAB results, result and the um, discrete points plotted along. As we can see from the red dots, these results are verified as being true. Now, the thing to notice here is that the supply or the frequency is twice that of the supply frequency. So, if we look here, so that's one sine wave. Let's, let's clean this up slightly. Should be here at this point. It's one sine wave, the other sine wave is here. So it's from 0 to 2 pi, we get two sine waves at a 50 hertz frequency. So this is twice that of the source frequency. It may be advantageous 
to write the equation for power in another form using the trigonometric identity. This will enable the power flow into the circuit to be separated from the energy borrowed and returned to the circuit. Let's, let's derive the necessary formula for sub the values into the trigonometric identity. So if we expand, expand again, separate into both components, and we are left with the following. Let the RMS value for i equal to i max over the square root of 2. Let theta equal to t theta v minus theta i. And let the RMS value for the voltage equal to v max over the square root of 2. Um, Seem to notice here now as well, we will have to expand this equation slightly as we will have to remove these brackets. So we just multiply this by this part and by this part. We also have the double angle formula here which we'll take care of as well in a minute. So this is the multiplied out equation. This is what we'll use. Double angle formula which is equal to cos a times cos a minus sine a times sine a. Now it can be written in the calculator exactly like that and it'll work out fine. Alternatively you can write it as in cos just put brackets around these just for clarity. It can be written as cos a squared minus sine a squared. Okay, each each way will work out fine. Um, I think I will use I will write it out the longer way just for for this purpose. And um, as the formula is kind of long, I think I will split it up. So this will be equal to our mass value for voltage is one hundred over the square root of two times the R mass value for current which is 80 over square root of 2 times cos theta, which is cos 60 degrees plus, now let's separate that as part 1, part 2, we'll just use this because it's the same as part 1, let's keep things simple, and so this is equal to 2000, this will be also equal to 2000 multiplied by the double angle formula, which we put in here. So let's calculate that out. Cos omega t well, I'm not going to write in the um, theta v because I know it's equal to zero and it'll just take up too much space here. Times cos omega t Minus clean now. Minus sine omega t times sine omega t is equal to minus 0 0.9396 which is equal to 1879.4 plus 2000 equals 120.6 Now let's look at the values I previously worked out for the other four discrete points for PR and PX. I'm going to plot and compare these against the MATLAB results. So these are both the values for PX and PR, the real and reactive components. Um, as we can see here, the results are verified as being true for MATLAB. 
if we take any discrete point and add the two up, if we add PR and PX, it will equal PT. So let's look, let's keep the math simple and let's look at here at 50 degrees. So we compare, it's, it's approximately 3,400. This is approximately 1,600 is equal to 5,000. So as we can see, one plus the other equals the instantaneous power. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to check out some of the other videos. If you felt like you got any value from this, please like, comment and share.